The next company to present here from the Loom Studio is Ectane Research, which will be presented by CEO Anna sjöblom -Hallén. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. So my name is Anna sjöblom uh, I'm the CEO for Ectin Research. Ectin develops cancer therapy against metastasizing urethral bladder cancer. The company is situated in AstraZeneca's BioVenture Hub in Mundal. The company was also very recently listed on a Spotlight stock market. Short about the background behind the company. One of the founders, uh, senior uh, physician uh, Christer Edlund, he had a patient with a primary tumor, which was a muscle invasive form of urethral bladder cancer. The man got uh, standard treatment for his disease, but unfortunately, six months later, the cancer had come back and now it was metastasizing to the pelvic area, it was potentially in the lungs and he could not get any further treatment. He was unfortunately expected to live just a couple of months more. On top of everything else, it was found that he had a parasitic infection, which he got treated for. Three months later, the man came back feeling very well. This was really astounding to Christer, who did not expect it. Um, he was examined again and it was found that he, the pa patient was totally relieved from cancer. So they looked into the previous samples that they had collected and they could see that he had suffered from a really severe form of urethral cancer. And that was totally clear now. So it's based on this that we are now developing something which we call the MFA370 to treat metastasizing urethral bladder cancer. Short about bladder cancer, it's actually the fifth most common cancer in the US and Europe. Just in the US, the healthcare costs 2020 was 173 billion US dollars. And if you look into the five-year survival for patients with metastasizing urethral bladder cancer, it's just 5% currently. And yearly, 200,000 people die from bladder cancer every year. So it's clearly really high unmet need currently. So current treatments have very limited efficacy when treating metastasizing urethral bladder cancer. And it's also associated with severe side effects, giving these poor patients very poor quality of life. And it's also associated with very frequent and long hospital visits. And that gives the society very, very large costs. And it's actually the most expensive cancer to treat today. So regarding treatment, uh, when you treat metastatic urethral bladder cancer in Europe or uh, US, this is what you usually do. You start off by giving the patient as a first line treatment, if they are well enough, something called platinum based chemotherapy. And if that doesn't work, you move on to second line therapy, which is a checkpoint inhibitors. And then if that doesn't work, which it usually doesn't, you move on to a uh, third line treatment, and that is present in the US, something called an antibody drug conjugate, uh, Padsev or Trodelvi. And it's here that we would like to enter with the, our MFA 370. There are subgroups of patients, uh, patients who are too sick to get platinum-based chemotherapy, and they get checkpoint inhibitors as their first line of treatment. And then as a second line treatment in the US, the patient gets PADCEF if the first didn't work. And then there are subgroups of patients having specific mutations in their tumors. And then they can get something called the FGFR kinase inhibitors, Balvarista, and that is then only in the US. So we would like to enter as a third line option for these patients. And then after approval, go for the lower lines. So how many patients are we talking about having metastasizing bladder cancer in the US and the five largest European countries? So if we look for on 2020, uh, the total number is 58,100 patients to be treatable for, with first, second or third line treatment. The third line represents 8,100 patients. This is numbers that we forecasted to increase with about 22% to 2030. Looking into the market potential in the same area, um, the total market is 4.23 billion US dollars, and that is first, second, and third all together. 
and that is based on the cost for PADSEV in the US and forecasted numbers for Europe. For third line treatment, that would give us 616 million US dollars or 769 2030. And then if we go to MFA 370, which we believe is a risk reduced project, it all started, as I mentioned, with the uh, clinical observation that one of the founders made. A lot of research has gone into this project and they are now three founders and they established something called the MFA 370. And MFA 370 is actually two different molecules and those two molecules are used today but in totally different indications. So what we are doing is we are repositioning those two substances in order to treat metastasizing urethroblastic cancer patients. And since these molecules are known, it's very much uh, information already established out there that we could use. It's toxicology studies, uh, there is um, different kinds of lab studies that have been done where one has seen that both of these substances have anti-cancer effect. So uh, the Swedish MPA has actually now granted us to go into the next step with our project, a clinical development. If we then look into MFA 370's uh, different advantages, we will give this treatment as an oral administration so the patient can get this treatment at home. And it, they can also get it at home due to the fact that these two substances have excellent safety profiles. That is known from before. Together, it will give reduced societal costs, something that is important today. It will be even more important some years from now. And this um, next thing with scientifically well established, I've mentioned this before, these two substances have been studied both uh, in vitro in the cell lab as well as in humans. So much information is already out there. And regarding uh, this being a repositioning project, this will give us a reduced developmental time and also very importantly cost and nevertheless also a decreased risk going forward. So what you see here is some preclinical data supporting, uh, supporting the clinical trial application that we filed to the CTA, uh, the MPA, I mean. Um, what you see is a cell proliferation experiment uh, using urethroblastic cancer cells. To the left in gray, you see the control. That cell number is put to 100%. If you add a small amount of one of the components in MFA 370, an NSAID, you see that nothing happens. If you add a small amount of the other component, an avamectin, nothing happens. But if you start combining the two in very small quantities, you get a strong synergistic anti-proliferative effect, an anti-cancer effect. And if you start looking at these cells in the microscope, what you see there is that you will see that uh, they have gotten a signal that they should die. And this is exactly what we think happened to the patient. That is, apart from uh, stopping, uh, the tumor he had did not just stop growing, it actually vanished and disappeared. So here you have the plan for our clinical validation. This is a plan that we co-developed with uh, our CRO, Link Medical Research. And it's part of the clinical trial application that we sent into the Swedish uh, Medical Product Agency. Uh, it uh, rather recently uh, was approved by this uh, phase one part, uh, which we will do on patients with metastasizing urethroblastic cancer. So 10 patients will be studied, and the primary endpoint we are looking at is safety and tolerability in these patients. What we will also establish is something called recommended phase two dose. And that is the dose we think will give us maximum clinical effect in the phase two part of the clinical trial. The phase one part will be initiated late this year and the result is expected late next year, 2022. And this result will then be reported to the Swedish MPA and they will then decide whether we can start the phase two part. The phase two part is then a clinical proof of concept study. And what that means is that we will statistically show that MFA 370 has clinical effects in these patients. And we are now talking about an additional number of patients being studied. Also here, 
uh, patients with metastasized urethral bladder cancer. The study is planned to be initiated H1 2023 and most of the data will be generated uh, uh, H2 2024. The primary endpoint I should mention is something called the overall response rate. And we are very happy to announce that uh, due to the listing of the company, uh, the phase one part of the clinical trial is fully financed. And regarding patent status, we have today approved and issued patent in US, uh, Europe, Australia and Canada. Uh, the patent will lapse 2037 uh, with five years uh, patent extension, which you usually get. We have also examined something called freedom to operate, and that has uh, also been confirmed. So we know that we can use this patent when we do a commercial development. New potential IP. Uh, by doing this clinical trial, we will generate a vast amount of information. One thing that could be pat patentable is the dosing regime to achieve clinical effect. Another thing that could be uh, patentable is that if we find some biomarkers, that way we could stratify patients in responders and perhaps non-responders. And finally, uh, one very important patent that we would like to do is to do a formulation patent. And that is something we would like to combine the two substances in something called a fixed dose combination. And this fixed dose combination, the thought with that is to maximize the effect these two substances have when they come into man. And also facilitate for the patients to do the correct dosing to achieve maximum clinical effect. Another thing that we see as potentially po possible is something called orphan drug designation in the US. And that would facilitate product development uh, but even more important, it would increase market exclusivity. And then we have data protection or registration, 11 years. That would give us a product protection until 2040. Here you see the management and board of directors for Actin. Uh, in the management, apart from myself, we have Chief Medical Officer Stephen Glazer. He is a medical doctor. He has worked as chief medical officer in a number of different companies. Uh, he's very focused on oncology and oncology trials. We have chief financial officer, Michael Owens. And Michael has also worked in uh, listed companies and uh, done a lot of financial reporting for them. And then going to the board of directors, they are headed by Frede Kjöval, who is the chairman. And he is also heading uh, other listed companies currently, such as Monivent, uh, Lipidor, or Sikum. And then in the center, you see the three founders of the company and also inventors of MFA 370. We have the senior physician who had the um, first clinical observation. And then we have uh, Professor Emerita Marilus Ivarsson and uh, Associate Professor Peter Falk. And then to the right, you have Carlos de Sosa, who is industry professional. He has been working within the life science industry now for more than 30 years. He is currently the CEO for Ultimovax in Oslo. Then we have Fredrik Andersson. He is a private investor and entrepreneur. And finally, Anders Vas, who is an investor too, uh, representing GU Ventures. So we strongly believe that MFA 370 is a risk-reduced project for the treating metastasizing urethral bladder cancer. We have demonstrated clear positive results regarding uh, the combination. And we also, depending that this is a repositioning project, have a very attractive product development timeline as well as cost ahead of us. And regarding Actin's target market, I mentioned to you previously that it's really substantial. And unfortunately for these patients, However, the competition in the area is limited. So uh, there is a high profitability potential for investors and also for potential acquirers. And with this, I would like to thank you. Well, thank you for the presentation. <laughs> Just have a couple of questions for you. Yeah. Like you said, Ectane has been listed since August now. Uh, what is the most important thing that's happened to the company since then? Yeah, uh, it's definitely the clinical trial application that the Swedish MPA approved. 
uh, because that has, uh, you know, reduced the risk of developing MFA 370 uh, further, you know, going into man. Um, you mentioned here uh, about your initial indication, but if we look beyond that, how do you see the potential in, in other indications? Mm. Uh, so uh, our preclinical data is uh, really suggesting that we may use MFA 370 very be beneficially also to treat patients with prostatic cancer, breast cancer, uh, colorectal cancers. And so next year our goal is to, based on the scientific knowledge as well as whether we can make a business case out of it uh, and the new cancer indication, then choose a second follow-up cancer indication to co-develop hopefully, uh, depending on finance of course, uh, with our bladder cancer project. And finally then, if we look at short-term goals, which yeah. are the most important ones for you? Uh, the short term is to uh, really sum up, you know, all the regulatory approvals and getting that all together uh, so we are able to uh, start up our clinical trial in Sweden. And then very importantly also to follow up, you know, we are preparing uh, additional CTAs in two uh, European countries uh, more. So in order to, you know, increase uh, the recruitment of patients for our phase one, two trial. And then Lastly, of course, to decide on a second cancer indication uh, to co-develop. Well, it looks like you have a very exciting period ahead of you then. Yes, we believe so, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here and, and telling us about it. Thank you. Thank you.